You're listening to The Angry Designer, where we cut through the industry bull to help frustrated graphic designers survive and thrive. What's up, Angry Designers? Today, we have a treat for you. Um, you guys asked for a couple more interviews, and, and when we have interview guests, we want them to be big. We want them to have our personalities. We want them to match our vibes, like our type of listeners and our Angry Designers. So today... All the way from the UK, we have one of my favorite design heroes, fucking awesome logo designer, brand designer, and, and one of the most funny personalities <laughs> out there right now. I mean, we had somebody earlier even say, she's like, how is this person so funny and doing so well? So it's a treat to have somebody like this on our show um, again. And I must say, might have. An equally good beard. I don't know. We ah, may have to have a beard talk here. Right. But the he one guys. and only yeah. Mr. James Martin. Yeah, I was going to say, you guys, you've also got a few <laughs> yeah. years on me, possibly. So I might catch up. I don't know. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, dropping it straight yes. in there from oh, the good yeah. Yeah. And also, I love how you're called like the love how you're called the angry designers, but you're two of the kind of cutest, most cuddly people I know, actually, to be fair. <laughs> We started a lot more it's, jaded, but yeah. we got rid of all that early on. Yeah, and you got rid of all that just like, Oh, God, we got nothing left to yeah. bitch about. <laughs> cool. You know what? It's just kind of it – is, it is funny, though, because, again, it's, it's an easy way to get stuff off our chest because yeah. it's like – I can't hold back. And when we started this whole, when we started this journey, it was during COVID and there was a lot of anxiety and we were so angry about a lot of things. And just by nature – I'm always talking like I'm angry, even though I'm not. <laughs> yeah, it just looks like it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's just like screw it. Let's just run with the angry. It's it's passion. It's what it's about. We love. So yeah. so anyway, needless to say. Yeah. Um. Okay. Let's get let's get the gushing out of the way, <laughs> dude. You fucking rock. Yeah. I I remember getting your book. Mm-hmm. Boom. Amazing. I remember getting it pre-ordered. Okay. It was just like no freaking way because I literally was just starting to follow you. I think three or four weeks before you drop this about the book, which is amazing. And then it's just been follow, follow, follow ever since. So, um, so this is, you know, feels like really cool. I, I think it's one of the coolest things about what we get to do is yes. a, of course, help out graphic designers who are struggling, who go through times, who, who need to be grounded a bit. But then number two, meeting like the design heroes, like this community is so different compared to, what I started with, you know, and what we started with, because it used yeah. to be so closed and tight, and nobody wanted to share. But wow, yeah. right? Because I mean, you were such a gentleman. You were replied right away. You're like, let's do this. Yeah, that's the problem with email, though, isn't it? I mean, yeah. You know, you're so accessible now, isn't it? Uh, I couldn't say no, obviously. Yeah. Um, no, but I think, you know, I mean, cause I'm, you know, I wouldn't I'm, let him. Yeah, I'm almost, you know, I'm. 40 hitting 40 now you know I, I know you guys are probably in and around that as well and like we we did grow up in a world without social media and i grew up in a world like you where um the people that you looked up to weren't accessible they they literally were almost yeah. untouchable yeah. in some degree so um it's a Obviously, it's super humbling to hear you say that because I think I'm just another douchebag from England. Do you know what I mean? So um, it's um, <laughs> you know it's all you know. I work hard. Do you know what I mean? Like it's not through lack of effort. Yeah. It's not yeah. through yeah. lack of um, trying. You know, I've often actually thought that I'm probably better at marketing than I'm at logo design. It just kind of happens that my logo design's quite good too. So. It works out. So, um, well, and you brand you're obviously very good at yeah. branding your own brand. So, with that yeah. being said, without people being accessible, have you ever had experiences where you've tried to reach out and just got smacked down for doing so? No. Well, to be fair, like I mean, I used to reach out to a lot of people, like in the early days of Instagram, you know, where suddenly you could drop into somebody's DMs or you could like they had their email address like on, on mm-hmm. you know, on show. But you know, I've never like. I mean, I'm not also going to name and shame somebody. Cause I'm, it's not, that's not what I'm here to do. I'm not mm-hmm. as angry. No, fair enough. Fair, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, fair. Yeah. <laughs> but, but no, I think, no, I think like there's, I mean, what I, what I will say is that like when I started this journey, um, you know, like made by James is like almost, almost a decade in the making. Um, you know, I often, you know, start at zero like everybody else, never paid for any followers, never done anything. I've just put my shit out there consistently for a decade and it's now where it is. And I always said to myself, 
when, like, if I ever get to a place of influence or a place where people want to hear from me, I'm going to try as hard as possible to never let them down. So I try and reply to all my DMs, all my comments. Quite difficult, you know, Very when cool. you get like maybe a thousand yeah. comments. Yes, absolutely. Post, but I do try and I do try and engage with people. I don't see this as like, a, you know, that's also why I have a newsletter. You know, I'm trying to give, it's not just social media. I try to yes. give a load over there for free. Like my, my theory is, is like, I just want to be accessible to everybody, no matter how much money they've got. So if you've got no money, come, I'll give, I'll give loads of shit away for free on Instagram. I'll give loads of shit away on, on my newsletter. Yep. So I've created free courses newsletter that you rocks. can have. Do you know what I mean? But if you want to invest a little bit, you mm. can have my book. You can buy a course. You can do some coaching. Mm. So I think for me, that was something I always tried to do was – be accessible no matter where you are in the world or like your background or anything. So I try and give as I try and give as much as I can. And but like, yeah, we all bitch about social media, but I wouldn't be here talking to you without it. Do you know what I mean? So it is it's a powerful tool. Absolutely. The problem is there's just some wankers on it. That's that's the problem. <laughs> yeah. Well, and to that point, exactly. Um, do you think it was it was because there are so many people that do what we do. They don't reply. They're rude. I even heard of somebody halfway through a podcast was like, you know what? I'm done. This is this is not my vibe and just wow. laughed. And it was just and not to us. Thank God. Otherwise, I would be blasting that no. one. <laughs> but I mean, it's just rude. So do you think it has something to do with um you know, your past, Who you know, the struggles, your life from a kid to now or, or whatever that's actually made you as humble as you are in this whole giving back you feel like you know you you want to give back um that's a good question i didn't realize this was going to be a counseling session but i like it we're going to go there um <laughs> so, oh man you have no idea yeah, you see no, that no, I mean, you got the coach here. yeah exactly i love it i'm gonna be lying down on that sweating later um no i think i think it's i mean a lot of it is i don't you know i I've, I've always got this um kind of mindset of I'm never finished personally um so I cool. personally know that although some people might look up to me I'm looking up to other people so I'm I'm on my own journey I'm on my own Very path cool. um and I know how difficult that path has been um not just like creatively or within business but you know personally we all go through certain things, you know, and have a past. Um, and I think that's what, you know, social media has allowed us to forget a little bit, you know, because it's the highlight reel and everybody shows their very best stuff. Um, the they're very best like, of them. Yep. yeah, this is yep. why, this is how much money I make now. These are the clients I'm working with now. Mm -hmm. You know, I've always charged 10,000 mm -hmm. now. Do you know what I mean? But they don't like to tell yes. people the story yep. of like, when they had to do work for free or they had a client failure or they just, you know, I don't know. I mean, I think that's the problem is the facades, it's the lens that kind of gets put on it. So um, for me, again, like I think just wanting to be different and wanting to be a little bit of a rebel, yeah. I thought, you know what, I'm going to be an open book and I'm going to share my life, share my story, share... The good times, the bad times, the really, really fucking difficult times. Um, because I know that will resonate with people more than if I talk to them about this great project that I'm on all the time or how much money I make. And that's not really, you know, I've, you know, I've, I've had this T-shirt for about 15 years. Do you know what I mean? I don't, I'm not particularly like, <laughs> you know... You know, I, I spend a lot of money on yeah. art, but I don't like roll around in nice cars or I spend, you know, I, yeah. I try and do some nice things for myself, but I also try and give back a lot as well. So it's like, for me, it's kind of, and I think it's more maybe up my upbringing, my character. I've always, you know, as a sportsman, I was captain of all my sports teams. So there might be a like, kind of a leader element there where I've now taken that kind of role within my industry i want to be i want to leave a positive impact i want people to have somebody that they feel that they can follow that isn't gonna bullshit them left right and center that isn't gonna right. try and tell them it's all gonna be all right all the time you know i think a little bit of honesty is mm, kind yeah. of what i try and bring and it's not through 
it's not angry or forced. Um, it's just like we all know, I think, deep down that, you know, life is shit sometimes, but it's also fucking great sometimes. And, you know, we've got to... Yeah, absolutely. It's the yin and yang, you know, because you, you can't celebrate wins without having the losses. So I think it's important to share all. Look, I'm not sitting here telling everybody who's listening here to go and open their Pandora's box of darkest secrets um, of, like, how they killed somebody's pet once. Do you know what I mean? But, you know, you know, I, think, yeah. you know I think it's just important. Like, I often thought, do you know what I mean, it was kind of, like, going to stop me from, like... I, I always thought, like, if I'm going to be this person, I need to be me all in, because that's much easier than trying to be somebody that I'm not. And I kind of, at the beginning, right. it was slightly tough, because I was like... Is this going to affect my job opportunities? You know, like I grew up as like, if you've got tattoos on show, you're never going to get a job. If mm -hmm. you've got this, you know, blah, 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 blah. So I think this generational thing that people of our age kind of suffer with a little bit of like, you never make any money out of creativity. Do you know what I mean? Get a proper job. That's a hobby yeah, for the yeah, weekend. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Now yeah. they're laughing, aren't they? Yes. So, um you know, so I think it's really, <laughs> yeah, I think it's really important that I've always just tried to lean into who I am. Um, I kind of got lost on a tangent there talking about something else. Uh, no, 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 no. You know what? Awesome. It's yeah. the cool part about this is okay. So I mean, again, I, I remember in your book, it sounds like as a youth. So often people in our industry, you know, they've always been creative in one sense or another, and 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 it seems to either be that type of personality. Or they're rebellious as kids. They're they're hooligans. They're troublemakers, right? And this this space is perfect for both because yeah. it allows people to express their creativity while still being a rebel. Mm. So yeah. let's let's talk, let's let's go back even before because I love yeah. the fact that you're even you were expelled as a kid from school. Were you not? I, I was. I was a little shit. I was. Uh, <laughs> wow. So yeah, I'll, 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 I'll talk to you. Like I'll go right. I'll, I'll tell you the whole story because it makes more sense when it put into more context. Sure, sure, so, sure. Um, of course. So as um, I was very lucky growing up, you know, great opportunities, boarding school, all the rest of it. Um, but at the age of 11, unfortunately, I was sexually abused by my maths teacher. Um, oh. And that oh. that kind of flipped like a, a big trust issue in my head, you know, so that like he abused the mm -hmm. trust of me, he abused yes. the trust of my parents, he abused yeah, the trust absolutely. of the school. So I didn't tell anybody for about seven or eight years up until the age of about 19, 20 uh, so I lived with that going through adolescence, teenage years. Yes. Um, was it my fault? What did I do? You try and black yep. it out. You put it in a little box, chuck it down here so when you just get yeah, on yeah, with yeah. things and try and forget about it. So what happened was, is when I, you know, being quite, uh, um, no, I wouldn't say a hothead, but I'm, I've always been very um, strong-willed, let's call it. So, But that strong will yes. found... Possibly the wrong crew, uh, drugs, alcohol, mm. and all the rest of it from about the age of 14, I would say. I was starting to do drugs quite a lot. Um, and that, that escalated in too many things like harder drugs. Um, and then all the way, I, what I would do, I would start stealing from people to fuel my drug habits. So I would go around nicking laptops and phones yeah. and take them to the local oh, dealer dude. and oh. exchange them for drugs and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that is what got, got kicked me out of school. That got me expelled because I got caught uh, oh, with geez, a group of friends. Yeah. Um, and then that subsequently got me kicked out of home at 17. So, yeah, this was about 17, about six weeks before, like, A-levels. So, like, that's the kind of thing that you need to get yeah. onto you know, this university or whatever over here. So... Um, yeah, kicked out, left right. home at 17, um, fucked around for two years, did even more drugs, basically went to work, made some money, spent it on drugs, rinse, repeat for about two years, <laughs> um, until basically right. wow. I woke up one day after, well, I say wake up after a massive binge, like we did go to sleep. Yeah. Basically what we do is we go out, I remember it was a Saturday, uh, drum and bass, Enzo's, uh, 
took loads nice. of pills, ecstasy, um, all night. Then what we would do afterwards, so we'd drive there, like take loads of shit in the car, take loads of pills, go in, basically dance for six, seven hours nonstop, yeah. come back. Obviously, wow. we can't drive though. Do you know what I mean? So what we'd do is we'd walk down the yeah. road, jump the fence, and go and light light fires in the like the local woods on private land, which is also not allowed. <laughs> oh my god! So, but then once so that so with that right. so, <laughs> all the way until the light came up. So this so with the kind of club yeah. would finish at around two or three. We'd probably about six thirty seven o'clock walk back up to the car, get back in the car. Obviously fine by then. You know, those four hours have helped yeah, tremendously, then, yeah. haven't they? No, not at all. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, <laughs> got, all, got back in the car, drove back, and I remember lying on my bed that day, and I thought, I thought work in like, I don't know, must have got back in at about seven or eight o'clock, and I had work at 12 that day, and I was thinking, no, in like four day, four hours, oh I've God, got dude. work. I've got like the whole, I've got a shift from 12, till 12 or something and I was like what am I doing right. with my life um mm. and then the next day oh. I went and enrolled at college to do an art foundation uh, and I think that's why art like foundation. I thought this like when I kind of introduced myself to like talks or podcasts or whatever it's always about like my mission being to give back to the industry that saved my life because I truly yeah. believe yeah. without Very this cool. industry I, don't, I mean, I can't yeah. predict what would have happened, but I would possibly be dead but you were or on possibly path, be, or be in jail or be an absolute mm -hmm. fucking waster. So, ah, uh, save me. Yeah, yeah. So why, why art foundations, fundamentals versus, I don't know, fucking accounting or health or anything else? Why, what was it about that that drew that, it just well, seems like, you know, coming from that world that you came from, that seems almost um, soft to yeah. get into that. Well, yeah, art for me was always, like, I was never particularly intelligent, like classically intelligent maths, <laughs> English, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, okay. like, yes. It was never, yeah, right. like my A-levels that I was doing before I got kicked out were PE, which like physical education, like sports stuff, design mm -hmm. and art. So those are the three things that I was right. trying to do, okay. uh, which is why the school hated me because I was never going to become anything. I can't become anything doing those three <laughs> things. So, um, yeah. but yeah, basically um, art, like when I was doing art as a kid, um, like it always felt like even, at, even though I wasn't the best, it always felt like it was a space and a classroom that I felt like I could belong in. You know, you were never judged on yeah. being right or wrong because it was, you weren't. It was art. So Absolutely. it was like there was no right answers. So whether it was good or bad in the tutor's eyes or your peer's eyes, that didn't really matter. And it kind of made it feel very inclusive, very safe. So for me, yeah, like I had to go at that point to something that I knew, something that I felt was safe, uh, something that I trusted, you know, and... At that time, art was the only thing that I had. You know, I had no qualifications mm -hmm. um, to get into any sort of higher education. I needed to start right at the bottom again because I can't go back like four or five years and be 17 or 18 again and do my yep, A-levels yep. again that way. So I had to go right. and do like, go through like a different route. So it was an art foundation. Um, then it was a graphic design diploma, like HND, and then I, that got me dead on to a two-year um, design, like um, communication design uh, degree um, you know, at university. And I learned fuck all there, to be fair. Um, but for me, and I didn't even know I wanted to be a designer at that stage. But for me, it was distraction. Right. It was like, okay, I'll finish this. What's next? Okay, I'll finish this. What's next? I'll finish. Mm. Like, even up until, like, even when I started Baby Giant, like, 12 years ago, like, I would have been, like, a good five years into my career. I still didn't really know if design was what I wanted to do. But I was in it, and I was just like, right. I'm just going to keep trying you know and it was really fucking tough you know for a long long time but you know i think you know I, the reason why i chose art to go back to your question is that it felt safe 
it was the obvious choice for me yeah. at that point um, somewhere mm. that I wasn't going to be judged too much. And it was more, it wasn't really even the subject. It was more like I need to have some sort of structure that stops me from fucking up my life at, at the moment. So, and now yeah, we're fair in. enough. Do you know what I mean? Wow. So. Yeah, no, no, no. And I mean, there is something beautiful about about that exact because I mean I remember in high school I was I was one of the fortunate ones who always knew what I wanted to do at a young age but I ran I went to a tougher school mm-hmm. and I hung out generally with 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 the more badass type people because they were just more fun than yeah. the good kids you know I wasn't necessarily doing the shit that they were doing but it was fun watching them do it I was living <laughs> yeah. vicariously yeah. through them Love that. and it wasn't until my last year of school that I actually um, I came out and was like, hey, guys, I'm into art. And I've been doing art for the past four years. So some people hold on to these other things they're coming out about. And I was coming out about being like, dudes, I'm an artist. And, and this is my stuff. Because otherwise, I was going to be judged and have my ass kicked. <laughs> yeah. And so, but it felt like it was it was so liberating at yeah. that point. Yeah. Because, again, it was, it, was, it was a safe place. Everybody was quirky. Everybody was very individual. Nobody was judgy. Even though in that class, I stood out. Because, again, they were like, why is that guy here, right? He hangs out with those people. He dresses like that. Like, I mean, I was completely the opposite of of all the ones that did stand out. But it was so – I was still accepted. It was cool. Yeah. It was uh, – it it's, it's a beautiful thing. It's a wonderful space to be in. It, it is. It is very right? accepting, you know. And it, we, we can talk like this with uh, other designers and we all feel that. You know, it's like I'm a musician as well, and yeah. there's that kind of same vibe that goes across both of these things. You know, yeah. You see I a graphic think... designer; it's almost like you're leaning out the window. Right. Hey, man! You know what I mean? You <laughs> yeah, get a nod. Yeah. True. Well, we're quite <laughs> easy to spot nowadays, especially like it's like the most 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 most, most beard, white hat, male glasses. have got beards, um, which is why I've which is why I've tried to um, to, to change it up without a hat right now, but. Um, you know, yeah, I think yeah. it's, you know, I think I, it's, yeah, it is, um, it is a funny. You got the Shogun thing going on. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Um, some of it different. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think, I think you're right. I think, and this is, I think this is what I think maybe spurns like the reason I do the things that I do now was from my experience of that safe, like how. Like everybody would generally help you, you know, how everybody would offer yes, you yeah, advice. Yeah. Um, as, as a like, mm. tutor to teacher to student, obviously, in the kind of art world, it was, if I say it felt safe, it felt nurturing. And I think that is something that I think went missing for quite a long time. And I think it does naturally go missing when you are starting your design career because, like, I, I was like you where I started at the bottom. You know, like people now in the design mm-hmm. world, they finish uni and they want to be at the top within a year, you know, with no, no yeah. knowledge, yep. no experience. They just want to grow an audience, mm-hmm. sell a course, make millions, live on an island, do freelance, you know, all that dreamy stuff that you hear right. about on social media. But, yep. you know, whereas with I, I had to start at the bottom and you, I did everything like loads of, I made tea most of the time. And then... But like it was yep, very yep. difficult to, because when you're working within an agency or we're working in that space, we didn't have access to social media or anything like that at that time. So the only people that you could learn from were the people who were above you within the yep. kind of agency structure. But they, yep. they're not there to babysit. Yep. Do you know what I mean? They're there to obviously help you exactly. on a project and stuff like that. But they're not going to sit there and give you free advice all day, every day, so you can learn. So true. Um, so you yep. have to kind of go mm-hmm. through a process of, like, learning yourself, trying to figure it out. And then what happens is, once you figure stuff out, you hold on to it, because you know how difficult it was to learn. And so you don't share that with the people below you. Um, and that kind of, yeah. like, my mindset kind of changed with that as I kind of started to grow Made by James. It's like, well, why not just give it all away and see what happens, you know? And that's gone, and help gone everybody. even yeah. further yes. than that. Yeah. So. Absolutely, right. absolutely. So, awesome. okay, so then what, were you enrolled in school, okay? So then what happened between when you enrolled in art or when you graduated art? Until when you started Baby Giant, which was what, like 2004, 2005? Yeah, so it was 12 years ago, which would have been 2010. 
Um, oh. ish, I think so. Yeah, what, we, what date are we now? 2010, 2011. So, yeah, 2023 now, isn't it? Thought it fucking then. Um, so, yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, like, so. Wait, what? Yeah. What? <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> Terribly lost then. That's that bloody COVID <laughs> shit. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, no shit, right? Yeah. So, yeah, so I kind of went. So, while I was at university, I was um, like, Getting, trying to get money to pay rent. I was back living with my parents, all the rest of it. So, um, you know, I was working at a local cafe, you know, making teas and coffees, you know, yeah. trying to figure out my next big move. But at that, at that time, it was just purely just, I think I was just quite enjoying the nothingness. I'm not I'm like, I want to tell you right now, like at that point when I woke up that one morning, I didn't stop doing drugs. I just started to have a lot more focus. You uh, know, I've only like, I've been sober now mm. for like two years now, sort of like clean of absolutely everything. So nice. no alcohol, no drugs. I'm trying awesome. to kick sugar right now, which is kicking me in the butts. I love sweets. Oh, um, oh my but, God. But ultimately, oh, at damn. the moment, like, uh, so go back to the question. So I just wanted to make sure that yeah, everybody didn't think, oh, he just suddenly stopped drugs and changed his life. There, there was a, there's a natural progression to these <laughs> right. things, do you know what I mean? So, um, so but yeah, when I was at the cafe, obviously I was just trying to make money to pay rent and all the rest of it. One, one of the guys who would come in quite a lot, his friend just started a design agency. It wasn't really a design agency. It was more of a, yep. a creative studio that was building like mobile apps and stuff like that at the time. And they were doing a few bits and pieces for like making games for like Coca-Cola and all this kind of stuff. It was always cool. all quite cool. But yeah. obviously for me, it was like making tea or going there. But ultimately like what the guy did, he said, well, would you like to try and... I can give them your details and maybe get you an interview because he obviously knew that I would I would talk to him every time he'd come in and I would talk about design. So he said, I'll try and get you an interview. And I walked in there, you know, obviously once I had my interview of my little A3 ring-bound portfolio, you know, we used to walk around with <laughs> nice. full of, full of <laughs> yeah. just drawings and there was no design in there. It was purely just illustration stuff. Um and luckily, they kind of said, you know, we see something in you, we'll, we'll give you a go. And it was like, at that time, it was like cool. two days a week, I think. So I was still working at the cafe and did my two days a week there. And then that grew over the years into a full-time role. And then, yeah, I was there for about four years. Um, and then Baby Giant happened, really. And that was more of a... You know, I was looking for other jobs at the time, um, going for other job interviews, um, like going for like jobs that I should. So it started know. as your freelance gig. Yeah, it was. No, it was, but there was like more. Baby Giant started, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Baby Giant was basically like it was this kind of idea of like I was, I think, twenty seven ish at the time, twenty seven, twenty eight. Um, wasn't married, didn't have kids, didn't have a lot of overheads. And I was like, if I'm going to start my own company, now's the time. Because I'm, if I'm in five years' time, I yep. could be married, I could have kids, and it's going to be a very different ball game. So we kind of, me and my buddy, AD, who also worked in the same place, kind of, we had a chat. He does, like, all the web-based development stuff. I do all the creative stuff, so... The partnership there works quite well. Um, he's very quiet. I'm very nice. loud. So that works as well. Um, <laughs> so, um, so I think like it was like it was one of those decisions like, why don't we try this now? Because I know he, I knew he was looking for jobs as well. I was like, do we do this now uh, and give it a go, give it a couple of years and see what happens? And, and that's what we did. And now we are still here growing every single year um 12 years later almost now since we incorporated cool so, so baby giant still very much exists baby giant is still a beast baby giant does all the brand yes. identity uh -huh. baby giant did it yeah baby, I, I even missed that my own joke there um, <laughs> um but yeah so baby just so obviously like made by james is the vessel so like for example what i mean yes. by that is like a lot of people find me and want to work with me, I say, that's great. 
you know, but it all happens underneath Baby Giant. Like Made by James is more designer mm. facing, you know, courses, books, mm. coaching stuff, whereas right. Baby Giant is client facing. Um, and they both Got work it. in tandem together. Do you know what I mean? So Made by James allows me cool. to Very cool. explore my new, my ever evolving mission of giving back to designers. I'm trying to give as much as I can, create yep. stuff for them, both paid and free to help them learn from the mistakes that I have and all the rest of it. Whereas like still Baby Giant is thriving. We've got animators, we've got like in-house, we've got George who's an animator, we've got AD still who's the web designer, we've got studio manager Lauren, my wife works with us as well. So um, it's kind of quite a family-based unit. Um, still quite small. Yeah. Nice. I still do all the creative work. Mm -hmm. I handle all the brand identity and brand identity systems. George does all the animation. AD does all the web. Um, um, we've been offered, you know, the opportunity to grow and expand and have multiple baby giant applications. And I've just said, fuck off, mate. No, not for me. Um, do you know what I mean? So I didn't, I didn't really get into it for to be an art director as such, you know. Huge. And it's not, not, any, not at the moment yeah. anyway. Do you know what I mean? Like I, like, I have a queue of like eight to 10 weeks for like brand identity work and people are willing to wait. So, and that's one of the stipulations. Like, Beautiful. I would love to work with you, but as long as you've got the budget and you don't need it tomorrow, we mm. could probably figure something out. But, you know, I didn't work Very this cool. hard to stop working. Do you know what I mean? This, I am living right. yeah, my yeah, dream yeah. right yes. now. Like I, I'll tell you, like right now, I could stop doing logo design. I could just do my courses and live happily ever after. I make a shit ton of money ah, doing that. Nice. But it's not for me. <laughs> yeah. like if I'm going to be teaching people, like I need to be experiencing the things that they're going you need through to be every doing single it. day. You know, it's, I yeah. cannot actively, I don't think, I think I'm going to be a better educator if I'm going through the things that designers are going through. Obviously, I'm doing a lot less work yeah. to allow me to have that kind of, it's not even balance, it's kind of counterbalance. Like, client work, made by Jane's work, client work, made by Jane's work. Um, so, um, you know, it does kind of go that way. But, you know, for me, it's like I always... Like I've got so much to offer the the design world, I feel. Um, and I know I've also got a lot to offer young designers or up and coming designers or people who want to learn design. So I'm just trying to find a balance right now of how to do that. It's not easy. Um, and I do work 14 mm. hour days every day, apart from Saturday and Sunday, but it's very good. It's for the bigger mission which is bigger than me. Yeah. You know, it's rewarding, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, get in at eight. So... I'll get in at eight in the morning and I'll finish at 10 and I'll be like, you know, go to bed then. Do you know what I mean? It's quite, I do kind of have <laughs> yeah, a gap. Right. I do have yeah. like breaks in between. I've got a full, like a five month old baby who right. I go and chill out with. I work from home. So oh, it's easy to go in for lunch and cool. spend like yeah. 10, 15 minutes playing with him every now and again. But you know, my days are long, but they don't nice. feel long because I, I truly, truly yeah. love it. You know, so. <laughs> yeah, I know it is. It, it makes a difference when you love what you do, yes. mm. because if you love what you do, you're never actually feel like you're working. Yeah. And sure. that's where it's like these days are just fueled by passion. Mm. They're not fueled by having to pay the bills and, mm. and this and that. Now, granted, it takes a little while to get to that yeah. point, um, you know, which kind of well, it kind of goes back to, you know, I guess my next question is how much. Obviously, you guys rock at Logo, at Brandwork. The animations are fantastic. Do you take on brochures? Do you take on marketing campaigns? Or how far do you guys um, stretch out your offerings? Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, this is quite an interesting question because when, I mean, there's a lot of chit chat around niching and niching and niching, mm -hmm. niching within a niche and niching, niching, niching. Um, yep. And to and to <laughs> a, absolutely yeah, and to an extent, I I I believe I am where I am through finding my niche, which is I mean I was a graphic designer for a very very long time, but then you know yep seven or eight years ago with the birth of Made by James, I don't exactly know exactly how long it was, but how long Made by James has been going, um, but that, that's when I started talking about logo design 
and that's kind of evolved yep. into more brand identity, brand identity systems. Um, so, like for me, my conversation is always based on logo, idea creation in and around logo design and trying to help people there. That's what Correct. all of my conversations are about. But I do shitloads. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So, like the other day, I was, you know, I was. <laughs> To designing book covers, you know, because for me, like brand oh. and brand identity, I suppose, or brand identity is everything that the things that I create touch, you know, like tangibly or yes. visually. So that could be website design, that could be um, presentation decks, that could be animation, that could be um, you know, e-learning materials, that could be books, that can be uh, brand identity systems. So... Like, and this is where, you know, money doesn't happen at just a logo. You know, money happens when you're working yes. with a client to build out Correct. a whole campaign or system. So although, oh, yes. although Preach. I am, absolutely right. although I am like very actively talking about the thing that I love to do, which is brand identity, logo mm -hmm. design with a heavy focus on logo design, I'll admit, um, what that does yep. is it brings my client in. And then I prove my value through telling them and showing them all the other work we've done for all these other people. And that, you know, so they'll come in for brand identity, but they'll leave with 12 month marketing campaigns, websites, and all the rest of it. So exactly. That's, yeah. So, I mean, does like me, even I was having this conversation with somebody the other day, and it was like, does even the person who is niched within a niche? actually niche which is a weird question bear with me bear with me um uh, how zen but, yeah but you know in, in the essence of like you know even as a logo designer or brand identity designer i still create content i still market myself i still like build other bits and pieces i still do advertising i still have to manage my office studio i still have to do but there's like on any given day there are five different tasks outside physically creating a logo. John, I mean, I think even if you're a niche yeah. within a niche within a niche, Absolutely. there are still things you, you still have to create content, yeah. you still have to execute, you still have to advertise, you still have to market. So I don't think anybody necessarily is actually niched as much as they think they are. That's what we kind of came to the conclusion. <laughs> There is a lot of misconception out there, right, yeah. about niche. I mean, you hear some of the other um, designer celebrities and they'll they'll boast about, oh, well, I, I create 200 or I charge $250,000 for a logo. Or you hear the stories how, yeah. you know, Martha is Stewart a charged logo, a million though? dollars for the logo. But like yeah. you said, exactly, yeah. right? The logo will only take you so far. It's that implementation and execution thereafter that we're constantly reminding people the logo is the start of that relationship. And it's 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 the, the nurturing of the relationship and honing it and helping you know direct in the future that's where the real value comes for the client yeah you know because ultimately you can give them the logo it doesn't mean they're going to know what to do with it right? yeah it's exactly that and i think that's i think you're spot on with I, I yeah i think a logo is only as powerful as the system that's created for it to work john i mean in that essence so you know, it's the kind yeah, of idea absolutely that, you know and like you say if i gave my client a vector file of just the logo what are they going to do with it how does it work on social media how does it work on their website <laughs> right. how does it how do they build it into their presentation right. text how do they use it on their billboards you know this is like you say this kind of and i've seen you know it's, it's, it's funny because you have to stop yourself from constantly being that twat who's always correcting people but you know <laughs> You know, when you kind of, when you hear these, like, well, the BP logo was 250,000 or 210,000, whatever it was. It's like, no, it fucking wasn't, yeah, you yeah, idiots. Yeah. It wasn't. Yeah, it was it the wasn't, whole, it, wasn't. it was everything that they built out around everything. it. Um, and I think this is, I think this is, I, like, as much as you say, it's not, I don't think it's, um, I think it's this conception that, you know, it's not that everybody wants to be um, an expert, but I think I think mm -hmm. it's very clear when people do talk that they're not sometimes, or they've read it somewhere, or they've heard it somewhere, and they share it as themselves and all the rest of it. Um, 
You know, I think it's really important because there's the people that do understand the system and how that works. I mean, everybody, I would say, who has any knowledge of design, when they hear a logo for 210,000, they're kind of giggling to themselves going, come on, you can't really think it right, was just a right. logo that was given to them. Come on, how can <laughs> oh, you actually right. think that? But some people do. Do you know what I mean? And I think this is... I know. I think they this is... that this, shit up. Yeah, this yeah. is the slight problem with with the social media bubble is that is the Chinese whispers kind of nature of it, how somebody can say something, then it kind of goes down the line and then suddenly it's fact or fiction, you know, and it's kind of awful it's fact, so true. you know. And I think, I think, I think this is a, a bit of a problem because there's people who are edu- educating people on design who have only been in design for a couple of years, or some of them even six months, and they're mm. sharing educated yeah. or educative, educational. There you go. That's a bad word. Yeah. Educational yeah, content. There you go. Yeah, educational. Kind of like educative. I kind yeah, of. Yeah, I that actually one. prefer <laughs> educative. <laughs> yeah, that's much easier to say. Too. Yeah, um, you know, like sometimes, yeah. sometimes the English language just doesn't have a word to encompass <laughs> yeah. what we want to say. So yeah. you make it up. I've you done it up. exactly. exactly. Yeah, uh, but I think that's the one of the biggest <laughs> problems. Is it's very tough for people to know what's right and what's wrong and who to follow because this is what yeah. numbers do. So if somebody I know people with yeah. hundreds of thousands of followers who don't have a fucking clue what they're talking about. I know people who aren't even <laughs> yeah. on social media who have thriving design agencies working for the best brands on the planet. Do you know what I mean? But the problem is somebody mm. goes, You've got ten thousand, you got twenty thousand, you got thirty thousand, you must know what you're talking about. Which is the problem? Because a lot of these people don't know. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, that's mm, my... Yeah. Right. I'll finish that. That's what I'll do. And I think that this is the perfect place to end this first episode, part one of two, of our conversation with James Martin. So this conversation was just kind of mind-blowing. I mean, I know we go deep, but I never thought we'd actually talk so deep about situations that are life-changing for people. And I mean, usually when we talk about life-changing things, it's it's business and 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 it's like how it's affected your life. But we went through some pretty deep shit this week. And I I, I, I commend and, and thank James for even opening up to us about something like this. And, um, you know, I, I think that's what makes him that much more real in, in my eyes and Sean's eyes. I'm sure in a lot of your eyes. So please come back next week for part two, where we guarantee that we're going to have a lot more laughs a lot more deep stuff a lot more shop talk about you know james martin what he's done what he's gone through and how he currently goes through stuff and of course we're going to throw in a couple little fun tidbits here and there like we always do so please by all means share us like us review us do as you wish all right but just come back and listen to part two next week my name is massimo signing off on behalf of sean james and i guess that's it stay creative and stay angry.